good morning. It is Sunday morning, July 18th, 2021. My name is Jenna. This is 1111 with Jenna. I am here every day at 1111 a.m. and 1111 p.m. Eastern time. So if I'm in Norway, it's I think 5 a.m. 11 and 5 a.m. 11, 5 a.m. 11 a.m. Going to be kind of a tough one, but when it happens, we'll manage. <sighs> last night. Great night with Gary. Great night with Ernie for dinner. Thank you, Ernie Robinson, if you're watching. That was fun. And then yesterday morning, Jeff Metzger. And Friday night, Carol and Rob. And Friday morning, Armando Ortega. I'm going backwards because I'm thinking how cool this weekend was. And then in between, we were celebrating birthdays. Happy birthday, Blake. Happy birthday again, Jeanette. Jeanette's birthday. I bought the chickens. I listened to my nephew's band. I listened to some other music yesterday. Went to the farmer's market, talked to the cheese guy. Okay, check it out. For those of you that are in the neighborhood, if you're watching, and I guess I should get the private thing undone and all that stuff. Hold the wire. Hold the wire. And see, somebody's here. Who's here? Edit privacy. Public. Boom. And. And. Somebody's here, whoever you are, hi. Hi. Maybe, oh, hey, Nikki, Nicole. Is, there, is your middle name Renee? I don't even know your middle name. How are you? I can't wait to see you one day. The other day, I was walking at the art fair. I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking, and I hear this voice, and then I hear this laugh, and I knew exactly who it was or I hope I was hoping it was because I turned around saying her name I turned around and I go Kathy Harvey it was Kathy Harvey she I knew I knew the sound of her everything laugh voice she turned she looked at me she's like oh my goodness I met her daughter her daughter's 24 she lives in Minneapolis Kathy lives in Kalamazoo super cool happy Sunday to you I would love to have you on the show sometime would you consider that please please I know, it's a pretty day. Lillian and I went for a walk on the beach already today, kind of checking it out. I, we got down there early enough so that it wasn't crowded yet, but my goodness, I don't understand wanting to be somewhere with all those people. Tony Saunders, when are you coming back on my show, brother, so we can hang out and talk and play? And then when I come to the Bay Area, let's do some music. Hey, Patty. Downtown Patty. So, speaking of Patty, okay, today is Sunday. Tonight, Carl Hess will be on Musician's Square Table. And hey, hey, Tony. Maybe you could be on Musician's Square Table next Sunday night. Or, yeah, Musician's Square Table next Sunday. What are you doing? Let me know. You might have a gig. I hope that you do, if that's what you want to do. We will next week. Oh, next Sunday? You will? Next Sunday night, Musician Square Table? <laughs> yes, cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right, so you guys, next Sunday, Tony Saunders, if you saw Corona Roki Thursday night, you heard him play Little Whispers Jam. Corona Roki, if you did not see the show, go back in my feed. Okay, cool, 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 cool. See you Sunday. Um, check out last Thursday, uh, not last Thursday, July's Corona Roki, because we do Corona Roki the third Thursday of every month now. That's it. And the other Thursdays, we have conversations with the creatives. So this Thursday, I have a creative and You'll see who it is, but so tomorrow morning we'll be meandering. Tomorrow night we meditate. Tuesday morning, maybe I have a guest on. Tuesday night, Dr. Andrew Rader. Wednesday morning, making and bacon with Patty. Wednesday night, maybe cookies and conversation and cocktails with Shauna or someone. Thursday morning, I think we'll be chilling. Thursday night, conversations with the creatives. Friday morning, Armando Ortega. We talk pie, we talk cake, we talk tacos, we talk 
ice cream and family. And then Friday night is display and share. And then Saturday morning is one more Saturday morning with Jeff Metzger. And then one more Saturday night with Gary Lambert, which was super cool last night. And then it's Sunday morning. And usually Sunday morning, I'm kind of chill. I might go for a walk, kind of do whatever, hang out. Ra Morocco. Do 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 Ra Morocco. Hi Carol. How are you? That was so cool. Enjoy the day. Bye, Patty. It is a beautiful day. Um, what else? What else? What else? I guess that just leads up to a guest that we have right now. Ladies and gentlemen, I haven't seen him in three years. So it's pretty cool. Isn't great? Isn't it great with Jeff? I love Saturday mornings. Hold on. And she's gone. Okay. No, she's not. Hi, Mama Grace. Hi, Mama Grace. Mom. Hello. She's got her volume down. Let me just give her a call really quick. Mama Grace, Mama Grace in the house. Sorry, next guest. Your call has been for Okay, it's all figured out. Ladies and gentlemen. Alex Martinez. <laughs> hey there, my brother. How are you? I'm good, Jenna. How are you? Thank you for having me on. I'm honored to be here. I'm so excited. Well, it's you know how much of an honor I feel about having you in my life. You've done some amazing things for me. So, wow, you're in New York. Yeah, I'm upstate New York, about uh, 30 minutes outside of uh, Albany. Oh no, sorry, Albany. I grew up in the I grew up in the East Bay, and so for my entire life, I've always called the city of Albany, California, Albany, Albany with the with the you know, instead of Albany out here, I get corrected from my friend all the time. I have a song that I sing, walking down the street in Albany. But I think right. I say walking down the street in Al Albany. I do Albany, and people always go, "Are you talking about New York?" I go, "No, I'm talking about the 510, brother." Albany, California. Albany. Yeah. People do say Albany, Albany, Albany. So when she corrects me, she goes, "It's Albany, not." And no, she goes, "It's Albany, not Albany." And I tell her, "Well, it's Alex, not Alex." <laughs> But now that I'm now that I'm here in this area, it's Alex now. Are you I don't, Alex? To, I don't answer to Alex anymore. I answer to Alex. Alex, Alex, <laughs> hello, Alex. Uh, and, and I even get a, I you get a deeper voice when you say Alex than yes. you say Alex. So it has to. It comes with the territory, I guess. Alex. So you're 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 making some food, throwing down some serious bacon down over there, up there. Yeah, um, I, you know, all of 2020, I was uh, uh, recuperating from uh, uh, the left leg amputation just under the knee. I got that surgery done uh, January 7th of 2020. And then uh, living down south, I was in a very small studio apartment. And um, you have the surgery in Mexico? No, 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 no. I had it in San Diego. Okay. Yeah. yeah but uh, uh, I pretty much spent all, most of 2020 uh, off the leg recuperating, sitting and wheeling around in a wheelchair. Once my leg got healed, uh, I guess it was probably March, April, May ish of 2020. I was able to get up on the prosthetic, but I wasn't really spending a lot of time on the prosthetic. And so uh, I had to kind of provide for myself. And so 
you know, uh, I mean, I'd always been, uh, uh, been a decent cook, but then I had to learn a whole new way of cooking, uh, fresher ingredients, nothing processed, uh, needed to take care of myself. Right. So, uh, I really cut out a lot of the processed foods out of my diet and started, uh, introducing and incorporating, uh, fresher ingredients, vegetables and stuff. And, uh, the air fryer was my oven. It was my oven. It was my, uh, uh, stove. It was everything to me. So I, I developed all kinds of techniques and ways to cook things in this air fryer that I had. And is it really that, is it that much of a game changer? For me, it is. I mean, uh, uh, it's, um, I think the best thing for me about it was uh, you can go from frozen to cooked instead of having to go through the thawing process of either leaving it out or letting it sit and free, you know. So I like that aspect of it, but it does give it a different, different dynamic. You know, you're not using as much oil if you were frying it and yeah. yeah. So I can like you really make French fries in an air fryer without any oil uh minimal oil i have a little bit of spray but basically all i do is cube up and cube them up and uh, uh oil them down and season them up and throw them in the air fryer and you know 18 minutes they're ready to go so and is it one of those ovens i don't i don't have an air fryer is it is it an oven that is also an air fryer and a toaster and a something and a something and a something and a something? Uh, this one, you know, I, I found this at a little consignment shop and uh, it was one that was uh, promoted uh, like those late night info, infomercials that had a rotisserie feature. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> as being, um, as being a, getting off the gig at night and I've been in hotels after the gig where you turn on the TV and there is nothing but infomercials. I mean, literally they have a certain kind of TV channel subscription that it's just infomercials. So I've, yeah. I've been tempted many times. Oh yeah. No, I've succumbed. Yeah. To I've been talked health. into it. I've been talked into it a few times, you know, so but you yeah, got this like... one at the consignment. So you got the, you did the winning move on that. Yeah, no, it was pretty inexpensive, and it was a big one. It was like a 10-quart, so big enough to do, like, a, a chicken. It had a rotisserie feature in it. Um, so, you know, it was, you know, it, it handled the it handled the, 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 the workload, but it's a, it, it does drain on energy. So unless you have a, uh, uh, mm. you know, uh, solar or something, it does kind of eat away at the energy when you that's interesting because I live in a 110 year old house with 120 year old electricity. Yeah, it might it might pop a breaker. Yeah, <laughs> in, in, in situation yeah. like that. I have if a it's a larger one. They have smaller ones, you know, but smaller ones you're really limited in what you can do. But so, what did you make last week? Just last week, I was watching you. I'm like, damn, Alex. Oh gosh, what did I make last week? Um, no, you know what my go-to is. Uh, is um, is an egg toast sandwich, and all it is is uh, a couple slices of bread with a cracked cracked egg on on each side, and then put it in, season it, and then throw it in the air fryer for like ten minutes. And, really? Uh, ooh, so no frying like, pan. No frying pan, and like spray a little bit of oil on it, and yeah, it's you know depending on. How long you let it go either over you know either sunny side up or uh hard but either way it, it's a really great quick way to put a sandwich together and that's been my go-to really but i saw some baked goods uh oh you're talking about the baklava <laughs> or a pie Oh, the pie. Yeah. But we can talk about both now that you've mentioned it. I'm listening. <laughs> We're all listening. So I made uh, this pie with a uh, cinnamon roll top crust. Cinnamon uh, rolls, separate cinnamon rolls. Like how many? Little, little mini cinnamon rolls. And all that was was the, uh, I did the shortcut 
where I got the. Uh, oh, you uh, did. The, got the tube. The, the page, yeah, exactly. The tube, and you got to stand away. You take the pops right. You scared a lot of my ex. You would if you do it. <laughs> but yeah, yeah that then put uh, uh, spread it out, cinnamon, sugar, brown sugar, rolled it up, and then sliced it kind of thin, and then. Rolled it a couple of times under a broken, uh, dust it between a parchment paper so it doesn't stick. And then I don't know what I did, but enough to you know, cover the top mostly. Um, and there's a lot of space that left the pie kind of aerate. Uh, but I was afraid that the top was going to get uh, overcooked. Normally, if you put the raw dough in a raw, you know, in the walls in about an hour. You're, you're so kind of breaking I, up a little bit. Yeah, I was on, on the sofa. You're breaking oh, up. Sorry. You're breaking up a little bit. Are you there? Sorry. It's okay. Let me, it's okay. Yeah, I'm here. And then you made baklava. Let me try one thing, maybe. Oh yeah, let me get on the e. Sorry, let me get on the Wi-Fi here. Okay. Da, da, Give me a minute. Have, Sorry. We have Wi-Fi music. Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Oh, where are you, Wi-Fi? Sorry. That's all right. Bakla. Am I on now? Is that any better? Yeah. Yeah. When you start talking about food, we get all excited, and then it gets all <laughs> crazy. So you made baklava? In the air? Yeah. Um, no, no. All of these have been conventional oven bakes. So uh, I hadn't had an opportunity to talk about. Uh oh. Now you're now you're frozen and slow. Maybe if you want to restart and jump back on. That sometimes is the ticket versus us sitting here it's trying. Frozen. You know what, Alex? Do you want to do you want to jump off and and restart and then come back on? Sure. Because we're having some. Rather than rather than try to troubleshoot here, sometimes I find that if you do just jump off, come back on, I'll accept you, as you are. I like your shirt, by the way. Five ten of us. It's frozen again. I don't know that frozen stuff very well. Let's see if I go like this. What happens? Do I? Yeah, he's still there. Okay, so I'll just go back to gallery. Uh... Anyway, so I've known Alex for a very long time, and from the Bay Area, and I think we might talk about how we first met and. We have some really great friends in common. Oh, there's my little seeds, my seeds of change. I have some carnation seeds that I was going to plant and then I didn't plant. And So, Rob and Carol, do you have an air fryer? I guess it sounds like Nicole does. I don't, I have an old toaster oven, but <clears throat> I've also seen toaster ovens that have an air fryer option. I'm open. And here we are once again, ladies and gentlemen. That's just because it's fun to do. Alex Martinez. Thanks, Dave. But I do need, I need a rim shot and a drum roll probably. He's dancing. Unmute, unmute, unmute thyself. Can't decide, I want that a t-shirt that says- That was my ketchup, that was my ketchup cabbage patch right there. Oh, the cabbage patch, right? I'm back. Hopefully this is a better connection. Way better. 
Awesome. Back and better than ever. So, when did we first meet? We first met at a Jungle Biscuit concert, mm -hmm. a show in the city, San yeah. Francisco. Uh -huh. At DNA, I think. D no, not. Um, it was no. not. I think no. it was. Uh, I think it was DNA Lounge. Was it? I'm yeah. sure it was DNA. And uh, Martin Reynolds, uh, lead of the Jungle Biscuits at the time, I believe, uh, was a friend I had known since he was in high school at Berkeley High. Um, he was part of a rugby team with a friend of mine from Richmond. And um, uh, I don't know, I can't, I couldn't tell you what year it was, but I know that I was at that it was show. It was in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. Definitely and, in the 90s. Yeah, it was in the 90s. And um, I was at that show and they brought you on stage. And you got on the stage and you did this freestyle that was amazing. You were like a beautiful songbird that got up there on stage. And you were vibrant. You were wearing this bucket hat and you were you were like the B girl, dude. It was awesome. <laughs> and so um, you mentioned after after the after that set, you uh, mentioned that you had some CDs. And so I caught up with you outside the outside the venue and I bought a couple of your CDs and uh, I put them into my CD changer in my car at the time and um, it was just on rotation and I couldn't tell you what CD it was specifically but I know that my favorite cut off of that uh, off of that one uh, uh, album was uh, your cop your cover of watching the detective that's my first CD. Yeah. That, man, that, I, that was on heavy rotation. I love that CD. Yeah, that was a good CD. And then your daughter used to listen to it quite a bit. Yeah. In fact, that's why we. it was in the CD changer. And it had 10 CDs loaded up. And you were right behind the Disney classic. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I, to, I always <laughs> wanted to sing for Disney. I'm still ready. Disney, Disney, I'm ready that, to sing with you. That's that was you know that was the one thing that my daughter would always say, and she was what five at the time, ish, and she would always go, you know, she sings like a Disney princess, Daddy, and I'm like, she does, she does. Yay! Well, that that CD is a favorite of a lot of parents. And then adult, and, and then children that I meet now, um, they go, "Oh, my mom used to play that CD for me when I was a kid." And it's either, it's either they, they it's a lullaby CD for kids, or or p parents would say they made their child to my CD. Oh, we made that CD is so romantic. We did. And I'm like, ah, bip, 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 bip. <laughs> glad to hear it. Glad I'm, I'm glad I was able to be a part of such an. Ex important experience in your life thank you and then you know i mean i followed you and then at the time mama grace was sending out the emails uh, for your, for your fan, she fan still club. Does. she still does way to go mama grace i love her and um that's how i kind of kept up with your career over the years right and then um uh, uh moish was the road manager for the professionals and and uh, and um, he was a mutual friend, and we ran into each other again at uh, at Breathe Health Center, the, the the Cairo Clinic there in downtown Berkeley, yep. and it was like old friends, <laughs> even though I'd only met you once. <laughs> but what, right away, boom. Right, right. And then you were a huge help with my family and with me getting me to the airport and getting me there on time and turning my music on to people and just just being there being a brother oh yeah oh, oh yeah i was uh working uh, as a lift driver in uh the the bay area there sf bay area from 2017 to 2018 and uh i had uh i had the power of playing any music that i wanted to calm people down <laughs> and you were in heavy I'm rotation. The airport. And your pen, the pen, your Pandora, Jenna, Jenna Mamina's Pandora station. There is one in existence. And uh, 
That was on heavy rotation in my car as well. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, yeah, no so, problem. So what was it like? You were in Mexico for part of 2020, for part of the pandemic? Uh, I was. Uh, I was. Uh, I was spending a little time there, yeah. Uh, it was uh, challenging. I know that. Um, you know, I, uh, I'm i of Mexican heritage. I'm American with, uh, 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 with Mexican blood. That's uh, what we call you, Alex. Alex. <laughs> Alex, exactly. Alex. Uh, but um, uh, I used to refer to myself as a Mexican-American. Then, you know, I spent some time in Mexico and realized that my communication skills are really lacking. And I'm 55 years old grew up in the Bay Area, so, uh, and there wasn't a real heavy influence on speaking Spanish when I was growing up, right. uh, and aside from two years of Spanish in high school, I really, you know, my only other uh, 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 interaction was speaking to my grandmother, my nana, uh, and that was more comprehending what she's telling me, and then her comprehending my English back. And so, you know, uh, that's about it. And so I really felt uh, handicapped, more disabled uh, than I was uh, spending time there. Uh, and so it was a challenge. I, I, I survived the two years uh, time that I was kind of back and forth there. Uh, but, you know, it was definitely something that was difficult. And, you know, there is uh, truth to the saying that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. But... The masks were awesome. You you yeah. up my mask, my my cool my my cool mask. Like I'd walk in, people would be like, oh, I love your mask. Oh, I love your mask. I'm like, oh yeah, my friend Alex sent them to me. <laughs> They're right over there. Yeah. Um, no, you know, I, that was just something. You know, this was the, right at the beginning of the pandemic, maybe March, April. And- uh, my brother and a family member were crossing the border from Tijuana into the United States in a vehicle. And depending on when you go, it could take anywhere from 45 minutes to six hours. And so this was about 45 minutes to an hour. And uh, in that line of cars that are crossing, uh, the vendors are passing between the cars. Yeah. And they're, you know... They're selling everything from ceramic goods, belts, pictures, kit stuff, everything you can imagine. And uh, because of the pandemic, they started walking around selling uh, uh, masks. Mm-hmm. And initially, I saw a wrestling mask inspired mask, like the hat. The hat has a. I never got call. one of those. I should have ordered one of those. <laughs> um, and these are styled, this is styled after. Um, Mexican wrestlers, luchadors, and uh, 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 it's kind of got a rich tradition in Mexico. And uh, they styled these face masks in the style of various luchador uh, uh, designs. And I was like, oh, that's genius, a mask, styled mask. And I knew a lot of people who were kind of interested in wrestling. Uh, I go, I'm a wrestling fan from way back uh and so you know i figured oh that'd be something somebody might be interested in and so i bought a couple and showed them to some friends and they were like oh yeah this might be a pretty good idea and so i started thinking well let me try and do some sales on instagram and one of my friends popped up and suggested i start an etsy shop and so uh i started an etsy shop and yeah it was um it was uh, something you know it, it took off, you know, so for a minute there, the sales were really brisk, and by brisk, I was about maybe selling about 25 to 30 masks a week, and, uh, uh, but they kind of fell off uh, uh, as the pandemic progressed, and um, uh, some people were under the assumption that, uh, I was have, that I was making them myself, and because Etsy is more designed for people to share their homemade goods but i was just buying buying them from vendors and then you know doing a little bit of a markup on it to include some shipping do you have any left i have one left 
Really? That's it. That's it. Well, if you're going to ever sell it, let me know. Because I love them. I love the, I, I rocked the sunflower one for a long time. Yeah, and that was something that I that I added uh, uh, when I started seeing them. I started going out to the various uh, shops and street vendors in Tijuana, and uh, um, and uh, in that kind of shopping and browsing, I saw the cotton one with the really beautiful embroidery pattern, and so. Um, that was uh, that was something that I added, and people were really interested in those as well. Yeah, they were great. So, are you making? Do you make Sunday dinner? Um, yeah, I make I make dinner pretty much every night, uh, unless you know there's somebody gets a hankering for pizza. <laughs> so I try to eat. And you uh, but, to go so you can get some slamming pizza. I bet in Albany. Uh, in Albany, yes, yes. Unfortunately. Uh, I haven't had an opportunity to actually get out and try like an authentic place. Um, uh, I've visited in the past, um, like maybe 10, 15 minutes from Lake George. Okay. Uh, really beautiful area. Uh, and the first time I came out here a few years ago, we went out to Lake George. It was during the off season and the only place open was this little pit pizzeria called Capri. And so we went into Capri and it was beautiful place you know really small, small small place good pizza but the one thing i noticed they had an oakland raider banner over one of the doors and i was like well, what's going on that's awesome and so i found out the story about it one of the sons who had passed away uh a couple years prior was an oakland raider fan and i'm like oh did he spend any time in oakland no he was just an oakland raider fan to get under all the New York fans in all New York fan, you know, skin uh, in the family. So he was like the oddball, right? He would be in my family. That would be the Dallas Cowboys. Fan, right? so, <laughs> <laughs> and so, and he was the one kid. And so unfortunately he passed uh, prematurely. Uh, and so they have this beautiful picture of him and the family. And he's there emblazoned with his, uh, uh, with his, um, uh, uh, Raider jersey and so it just felt like home and the bonus was it's great pizza <laughs> and so uh, July 4th I had a slice of their pizza and it was good so. only one slice? yeah I was sharing it with kids and other people man I can only get one slice yeah, better better buy two next time right right. Are you, are you doing any other work out there making anything else happen? Um, you know, just uh, uh, making, just doing uh, uh, cooking. Cooking. Just really just trying to do uh, a varied menu for uh, the family out here. Uh, I've pretty much gone through the repertoire of most of the stuff that I kind of know. And uh, now I'm going to have to go back and repeat it. So my internal cookbook, I learned last two months. Uh, well, I just, I know that you have other talents. I know that your, your, your cannabis world was quite large for a long time. And are you doing any, any cooking, cannabinated cooking? Um, you know, I had just gotten some material uh, maybe a month ago and I finally rendered that last night. Um, and so I've got maybe like two cups of butter uh, prepared. Um, I'm probably going to do a baklava with it. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. I remember being at a 420 celebration with Moish, and this woman made scalloped potatoes. Mm. And they were really good. Yeah. Um, really good. When I was work, Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I, I just, I know that you can, I mean, I've made some savory everyone's always going pop brownies or cookie or something, but you can really do some lovely cannabinated dishes with savory components as opposed to always the sweet. Yeah. One of the things I like to do is like a bechamel white sauce with, uh, with the can of butter. And uh, that always comes out real nice with some noodles. Uh, and then um, my ex, I learned a little trick from my ex and that's taking some really ground up material 
and putting them in the oven and decarboxylating it means activating it, heating it up to about 200 degrees ish uh, in the stove in the oven, and then you could use that as like a like a general seasoning as well oh and so like actually, an oregano like that's what you would you'd actually season with it and then you'll get the you'll get the effects from that without because it's already been cooked yeah you just got to bring it up you just got to uh add some heat to it to activate the chemicals in it to make it you know give it the power how long would you do that for i guess uh, in the, in the air fryer <laughs> I'd be afraid of doing it in the air fryer because it would blow away. <laughs> <laughs> it would disintegrate, maybe, because it's so powerful. No, it would just blow everything around inside the oh, chamber. Oh, because it's a, it, it's an air. Ah, oh, got there, it. See. There you go. <laughs> How come you're limping? Hey, you, come here. He's limping. I don't like that. Hmm. All right, so the air, there's actual air movement in the air fryer. See, I don't know these things. I need to get on the air fryer tip. Yeah, it's a, uh, it is a game changer. I tell you, that's the way I really enjoyed um, vegetables. It's been awesome for vegetables, Brussels sprouts and broccoli. And, and, uh, Mama Grace, I think we're going to have to go get an air fryer. Yeah. Your, your counter or mine, one or the other, probably hers. She has a little more counter space than I do. <laughs> this is my kitchen. But, well, you have me inspired. Would you consider coming back next Sunday? Um, sure. We could talk about maybe between now and then you might have some other recipes and we could talk. I, there, there are people I need to get. Yeah, Rob, we need to get an air fryer. There are people on here that I know appreciate um healthy cooking and alternatives to cooking and alternatives to pain relief. And I know you've had great success using cannabis as a pain relief because you've gone through serious pain. Oh yeah. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, uh, and since 2011, uh, I had been going through issues with my left foot, uh, having, uh, infected ulcers and blisters develop, uh, I'm an insulin dependent type 2 diabetic and uh, was diagnosed in like the late 90s. But for a decade, I just didn't care, didn't take care of myself. So you didn't weren't just... on insulin at that time? No, uh, I was uh, diet and um, medication, but I monitored and ma managed me. You know, I just love my pastas, I love my potatoes. I love my carbs. I wasn't a big drinker. And so, you know, uh, but, and I'm not like a sweet eater, but it was just all the, all the breads and all the carbs that, that sure. continued to deteriorate my health and my foot. And so 2011, 2012, I had my first amputation. That's what we were uh, hanging out at Breathe. Yeah, my, my pinky toe and partial part of my, part of, part of my foot. And then, uh, uh, two more amputations after that, uh, toe and partial foot amputation. And then the last amputation was uh, uh, the lower leg under the knee, uh, January 220. Wow. So right before the pandemic, you had that surgery? Uh, yeah, right before the pandemic. Yeah. Wow. And then before then, I had had uh, a bone, uh, an infected bone issue. Uh, osteomyelitis in my right foot and so I went through a series of surgeries dealing with that as well and so for the past eight nine years I've been in pain hobbled uh, uh, isolated all of that stuff and so yeah I've used a lot of things to kind of manage my pain cannabis has been uh, a really big factor in that um, uh, Thankfully, we have a great friend that makes really great products as well. That's transition to that. One of the products that uh, uh, has been awesome is the comfort cream, Moshe's yeah. comfort cream. Uh, it's been a staple of, of my uh, therapy. 
uh, it's just so it's soothing. It's it's the effects are sustained. They last long. Uh, it's I, a really I great sell touch. it from here. I have I have creams here because I make my own salve, but his comfort cream is like what the go to people go. Oh, no, I need comfort cream. So I always when I'm in the Bay Area I, I, or he sends it to me and I have I actually have 12 of them here right now. So, yeah, with orders almost daily, someone's asking for it. Yeah, that's awesome. It it, it was it, it was it's awesome, you know. And he's still plugging along, man. I mean, one of the best things I think about the product is uh, the person who's responsible for making it. Moish is an amazing human being. Yeah, he and I are working on a skincare line for me. <clears throat> well, that's great. Yeah. Oh, well, that's awesome. A three a three part skincare line. Well, that's that's beautiful. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love the fact that you have have you you did isolate. You did you know, and you worked really hard. Also, when I met you, you were working hard on healing, and then you were working at Breathe, and now you're taking care of others. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's it's interesting. I mean, I had only kind of cooked for myself, and so you know, I'm the type of guy that's like, oh. Egg sandwich in the morning. Okay, that's great. Egg sandwich every morning. Okay, that's great. You know, and so I had to kind of expand everything and go. Okay, I need to make this, and then I've got leftovers. But then I need to consider this, and, this. and so the meal planning aspect it kind of was a challenge for me. But I've managed it pretty well, I think. You know, I'm sure they appreciate you there. How many kids are there? Um, there is uh, uh, most of the time two kids. And uh, two dogs, three cats, um, uh, three adults, four adults, including me. Uh, but um, the kids, no problem. The kids are good on like ramen and nuggets and and, and French fries. You and, know, we sneak some fiber. Food. We sneak sneak some fiber into the smoothies, but you know, generally they're easy to cook with. Sneak in, you know, one thing that I love putting in smoothies that I shouldn't tell anybody because if I tell you, then you won't what like it anymore, is a zucchini. Yeah. You know, you can always put in spinach and that you can take, they go, oh, it's green, I'm not going to, but if you put a, a, a zucchini in, nobody knows it's there. Cauliflower, too. Like Cauliflower. Rice, right. Yeah, that's for sure. Broccoli, you can figure it out. Zucchini, right. cauliflower. <laughs> That's so true. You're like, nope. I make zucchini waffles. I made them. I have to post the recipe. People keep asking for the zucchini recipe. I saw that. I was there for that show. It was, uh, I needed to know more of that savory waffle. That yeah. was awesome. And I have put cauliflower in waffles, and it makes them more um, like a mashed potato vibe. Okay. Okay. But light, right? Because it's right, right. Cool. Right. Well, we can definitely talk more food for sure. Oh, I look, yeah. I mean, I could go on for hours. All right. <laughs> well, food. come back next Wednesday, Sunday and we'll, we'll go <laughs> for another hour. That sounds good. I'd love to come back. All right. Thank you, Alex. And then, yeah, well, old friend, wish. always, always welcome. I wish I could have kept up with the, uh, uh, the live chat. It was uh, kind of, you know, I don't know, my, my, my other laptop was lagging. So I apologize to those out there. Well, Please. I'm just going to, I'm going to, post oh you didn't come up oh rob thank you rob you're a great guest too <laughs> isn't, he, isn't he great yeah yeah no you are fantastic but anything post your post a, you know your name whatever you want um you can respond you can go back now and respond to anything okay awesome i look forward to that all right cool well i look forward to seeing you next sunday yeah thank you jenna so much this has thank been, you alex been super good. fun man Thank All you. Right. Cool hanging. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Alex Martinez, everyone. Alex. Alex. Worst rabbit cats ever. I can't. I remember that now that you said that. <laughs> I do. I remember totally. All right, man. Bye, Alex. Thank back. you. Thank Thanks. you. I love you. Love you too, man. Take care. How fun, how fun, how fun. Now see, it sets the tone. 
See, people ask me, what are you doing this weekend? I'm hanging out with Alex and Jeff and Carol and Julie if she jumped on, whatever. My peeps, my friends, family, for sure, for sure. But, and last night I got to hang out with my friend Ernie Robinson, Ernest Robinson from high school and his sister and his niece. And we had a fabulous dinner and, but we were, I, he said to me today, he goes, do you know that we were at dinner for four hours? And I said, dude, no wonder I was hungry when I got home. I was starving when I got home. Cause I got home at about quarter to 11 and I thought, I need to make some food, I'm hungry. Because we split stuff and it was very particular, beautiful, small, small plates. We could have ordered more, but it was really good. And this was really great. Thank you, Alex. He was a, a great help when my dad was going through his journey with his, my father had an um, amputation and, and I knew that Alex had gone through that. So it was, you know, sometimes daily phone calls or suggestions. Oh, happy birthday, girl. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Reagan. Number five. Wow. Five years old. Happy birthday to you. And I know there's a couple other people out there that have birthdays today that I know. Happy birthday. I just can't remember, but it's someone, someone in my immediate world. Happy birthday. Oh, and it's Blake's birthday today. Happy birthday, Blake. Mama Grace, I'm going to make some food. I'm thinking egg sandwich and I'm thinking air fryer. Need to get an air fryer. Instapot, if they have a smaller Instapot, like I have a small crock pot, mini crock pot. I love my mini crock pot. But if there's a smaller Instapot, because that other thing is just too big. It's just too big. Anyone have a letter for me? Give me a letter. A letter, a letter, a letter, a letter, a letter. And someone asked also if I would start playing my music again. Oh, she's such a cutie. That's cool that their birthdays are that close. All of you. Oh my goodness, Julie. You and your granddaughters are all July babies. X. Why do you do that to me? Why, Mare? You're such a nice person. Why would you do X? I wish you beautiful day. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I don't, I wish you xylophone thoughts and x-rayed words and a xanthum, xanthum and excited filled heart because xanthan is a really good it's a thickener but it's a good it's a it's a healthy thickener <laughs> x i'll work on the x have an excellent day everybody <sighs> stay safe stay healthy be nice and always thank you alex alex there's an x for you Love hard. Tonight, Carl has love, really. <laughs>